Thank you for joining us, everyone. I'm Tammy Fields. Here are your top stories in weather in 90 seconds. Mother Nature taught us a lesson. It's unpredictable, but I'm confident, confident in the decisions that were made. More deaths are being reported following Hurricane Ian last week. The total in Florida now at least 100. Lee County officials are facing criticism following delayed evacuation orders before the storm made direct landfall. The city of Orlando is asking you to limit your water usage. The hurricane damaged the sewer system and caused overflows into lakes throughout the area. Crews hope to have the pipes repaired this evening. University of Central Florida students will return to class tomorrow. The university was originally scheduled to reopen today, but campus leaders wanted to play it safe following damage assessments. Dining and recreation options are up and running for the students who have already returned. Time now for a check of the forecast from Central Florida's only team of dual certified meteorologists. A beautiful dry evening across central Florida with low humidity and mild temperatures. I'm meteorologist Chris Gilson. A live look at downtown Orlando here at the 6 o'clock hour from the White Curve Realtors Hallmark Property Skycam showing those beautiful skies in place. Temperatures right now are in the 70s. Even in Orlando, we're down to 76, 75 in Sanford and Daytona Beach, lower 70s in Palm Coast. So beautiful evening underway. As we go into your Tuesday, we could have some added clouds, maybe a few isolated showers, but it's not going to be widespread significant rain. I'll show you what counties have the best chance for that rain coming up in about 10 minutes. The path to recovery has begun. Cleanup and recovery efforts after Hurricane Ian continue all across Florida. That's after the storm slammed the state on Wednesday. Power has been restored to much of Central Florida, though many homeowners and renters continue to wait. Officials report at least 100 deaths in our state due to the storm. That includes locally five in Volusia County, one in Lake County. The majority reported so far are in Lee County, where at least 54 people died. Also in Charlotte County, so far, 24 reported deaths. We have seen record flooding here in Central Florida. Many residents have been using small boats to get out of their homes to get to safety or to wait for water rescues. Take a look at this map. These areas highlighted in red show some of the worst flooding in our area. Here's a closer look at Seminole County. The Little Wakaiba River exceeded its banks and flooded surrounding neighborhoods. Many residents lost power and have had to be rescued by first responders. Our team of reporters are fanned out across the central Florida area, monitoring damage and recovery from Ian. Our team coverage tonight begins in St. Cloud, where thousands of residents will be impacted by rising waters over the next several days. City officials are encouraging many in the voluntary evacuation area to leave. Spectrum News 13's Greg Pallone met a family who's playing the waiting game like so many others. You could call Jennifer Dawn and daughter Kayla the unofficial traffic cops of Rummel Road. Most of Jennifer's parents' property is still underwater after all the rain Ian brought. The high water from overflowing Lake Toho is spilling over into the street. Signs are up warning drivers. We stayed here last night and kind of just watched it rise. Hurried cars and trucks are making big wakes, pouring more water onto the property. Mom and daughter decided to gear up with goggles and water noodles. We give them thumbs up if they go slow. <laughs> they man their post at the end of the driveway with signs saying, slow down. It's a mixture of ignoring. It's a mixture of, I hear, I see you. It's a mixture of, you know, oops, I'm sorry. It's been bad, but things will get worse for people living in this area near East Lake Toho. City has notified more than 3,000 residents several more days of high water is on the way and they're encouraging people to evacuate if they can. So that's been a concern. It's a wait and see for Jennifer, Kayla and their family. For now they can just use their voice to remind drivers to drive slow in the water to avoid wakes then decide if it's time to pack up and leave for safety. We're going to stay here and then we'll get them to where they need to go if they decide to it's time to leave. In St. Cloud, Greg Pallone, Spectrum News. The city is still going door to door informing residents of the rising water levels. Reverse 911 calls are being made to them as well. 
If you live within Orlando city limits, you are under a water usage advisory until further notice. The city says a storm damaged the sewer system. Take a look. This is video provided by the city. It shows a situation at the Iron Bridge Water Pollution Control Facility. A 36 inch main broke and caused overflows into lakes near three city lift stations. They were hoping to fix the impacted pipe later on tonight. While crews continue making emergency repairs, residents are being urged to severely limit their water usage, especially for things like laundry, dishwashing, showers and irrigation. To be clear, this is a usage advisory, not a boil water order. Days after Hurricane Ian left our region, we continue to see damage from the storm unfold. Local officials say it was an unprecedented rain event, drenching the Orlando region in more than a foot of water, which some local sewer systems were just not ready to handle. Spectrum News 13's watchdog reporter Molly Durick met with one Winter Park resident whose yard has been flooded with sewage runoff. Kathy Botticello has lived in Winter Park for 21 years, but says she's never seen or smelled a problem quite like this. We went through Charlie, we went through Irma. We have never had an issue with the sewer system and stormwater overflowing like this. this has never happened before. But Hurricane Ian was different. Our neighbor literally had this cap blown off of their outtake valve because of the pressure from the backup. Days later, the storm's heavy rain still overwhelming sewage pumps throughout the Orlando region and disrupting residents' lives. The cities of Winter Park, Castleberry, and Orlando proper have all issued warnings to residents, urging them to use as little water as possible until the sewage backups are resolved. And it's not clear when exactly that resolution will come. And they have this little patch of yard. In the meantime, Kathy's two dogs are exploding with energy after days of not being able to run around like usual. Most of the land here is now contaminated, but Kathy says they've managed to keep this small patch of grass dry. And this is really not enough room for her. And we can't walk them on the sidewalks or the street because of the flooding. So there's really nowhere else to take them. The backyard's off limits, not to mention the pool, which will need to be drained and sanitized. But none of that recovery can start while the sewage runoff is still here. I filed a FEMA claim, talked to my insurance company, but you know, again, it's hard for them to assess how much damage there is because it's still occurring, so I, I don't know. Botticello says she doesn't have flood insurance. We don't live in a floodplain, and technically, we didn't have any flooding from the hurricane. <laughs> It was the city overflow that caused all this damage. In Orlando, Molly Durig, Spectrum News. The CDC does provide some information about how to restore outdoor areas after a flood. Exposing the contaminated area to sunlight can help, they say, but the agency says getting rid of all of that bacteria can take several months. We have all of the details for you now on our website, mynews13.com and the Spectrum News app. Be sure to keep us updated on any sewage issues that you are seeing out there here in Central Florida. President Joe Biden announced $60 million in aid to Puerto Rico to help with rebuilding efforts after Hurricane Fiona tore through the island last month. This comes as the president and the first lady, Dr. Jill Biden, visited the island to view recovery efforts. Hurricane Fiona devastated the island with high winds and more than two feet of rain. The president said the money would go towards rebuilding levees, roads, bridges, and other critical infrastructure. He praised the resiliency of Puerto Rico. Yet somehow the people of Puerto Rico keep getting back up with resilience and determination. Quite frankly, it's pretty extraordinary when you look at it from afar. And you deserve every bit of help your country can give you. President Biden will visit Florida on Wednesday to view recovery efforts here from Hurricane Ian. <laughs> The November elections are just over a month away. Just ahead, we break down our new exclusive poll looking at some hot button issues that could impact the upcoming election. Back in a moment.
go head to head with other high schoolers across the country and prove your knowledge of politics, sports, and current events in the ultimate televised news competition. Visit spectrumnews1.com slash spectrum news challenge to apply to participate today. Our community is incredibly dynamic and diverse in many ways, and so is our weather. That's why at Spectrum News 13, we make sure you have the accurate information you need to plan your day every day. Watch the Spectrum News 13 weather experts on your TV and on the go with the Spectrum News app. So, I thought you guys were built for business. This network solution doesn't feel like it works for mine. That's, uh, that's accurate. Yeah. Accurate. You're just gonna have to accept it. Yeah, accept it. I, uh, yeah. We get it. Is that what I said? At Spectrum Enterprise, we design solutions around your needs for success on your terms. Because we believe technology only works if it works for you. So go ahead. Be unreasonable. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. From sunrise to sunset, stay informed with the Spectrum News morning and evening briefings, keeping you connected throughout your day from your team at News 13 providing you with local news that matters to you and your daily weather planners. Turn on notifications in the Spectrum News app for every weekday update. Spectrum News, your community connection. Available on the App Store and Google Play. Central Florida Beyond the Soundbite, a Spectrum News 13 podcast that offers a closer look inside the issues. Available now on the Spectrum News app. It is 6-11 on this Monday evening. Welcome back into your Weather on the Ones. I'm meteorologist Chris Gilson. Beautiful out there. Tough day to be indoors when you're seeing sights like this outside along the coast in Brevard County. The Bogan Months and Months weather camera at Shepherd Park. Looking at those beautiful skies overhead. Some folks out for a walk along the coast this evening. Not a bad evening for that. Live look at Clystron 13 radar showing that we are quiet. Now your eyes may be drawn to this little blue line that's moving across Osceola County towards Haines City and Lake Wales there in Polk County. That's the East Coast Sea Breeze. And we hit a high temperature today of 85 in Orlando. Now with that East Coast Sea Breeze working inland, we're back down to 76, 77 in Melbourne, 80 in Kissimmee, 77 in Ocala and Leesburg. So it is a beautiful evening. On top of that, the humidity is low. Temperatures are in the low to mid 60s, upper 50s to the north there in Ocala. So when we have those dew point temperatures or the humidity in the upper 50s and low 60s, it feels pretty nice. And we'll see that prevail through the evening hours. And as we go into the overnight, looking at temperatures sliding back into the lower 60s. Clystron 13 future cast showing that chance for a few isolated showers along the east coast. As we go into Tuesday afternoon, there could be a few light showers. It's not going to be a lot of rain, uh, so we're not looking at any concerns for widespread heavy rain for your Tuesday. Just a few added clouds, maybe a few showers, mainly along the coast in I-95 in Volusia and Brevard County, so east of I-4. And then as we head into Wednesday, we're going to get a reinforcing shot of some dry air, which is going to keep us on the quiet side of things as we head through the middle of the week. So temperatures tonight down into the lower 60s. As we head into your Tuesday, we're in the low to mid 80s. Looking ahead to the weekend, plenty of sunshine ahead. Temperatures into the mid 80s. We'll take a look at that extended forecast. How long this beautiful stretch of weather continues at 621. Volusia County schools will remain closed until Wednesday after Hurricane Ian. The district says none of those schools suffered directly from the flooding, but the community did. Spectrum News 13's Alice Herman spoke with two school employees impacted by flood damage. It was up to right here. The floodwaters destroyed almost everything in their home. Chico and Barry Powell are cleaning out the house, leaving most of their possessions on the curb. 
We've since cleaned a lot of things out, so all of this has to go. Chico says she called the police repeatedly for help as the floodwaters rose. I called again. They said, we have you on the list. Just be patient. And the water just kept coming. Despite a local curfew, the kindergarten teacher says her husband climbed out a window to search for help to escape the rising water. It was our lives, our lives. It was either get out and get help or stay in and die. In this neighborhood, countless homes were destroyed by floodwaters and sewage. Next time, uh, we won't wait for anybody to tell us to evacuate. We're getting out. In Daytona Beach, Alice Herman, Spectrum News. Chico says that she doesn't know if she will make it back to teach on Wednesday as she continues to pick up the pieces. Here is a full school district lineup. Students in Bavard, Lake, Flagler, Marion, Seminole, and Sumter counties were back in class already. Classes in Orange and Osceola are set to resume on Tuesday. At this point, students in Volusia, they go back to school on Wednesday. Bethune-Cookman University is closed for another day as damage to the campus is inspected. We stopped by over the weekend to check it out. If you're a BCU student, leaders want you to stay where you are for the time being. They say they'll send out an update on a return date. There's also a hurricane relief fund mentioned on the school's website. The University of Central Florida, by the way, is reopening on Tuesday. It was planned for today, but University of Central Florida leaders wanted to play it safe. Dining and recreation options are up and running for the students who have already returned. Here's a post storm road check for you now. There is no construction for the time being, so don't expect any closures for that. The toll roads are still free after Governor Ron DeSantis suspended tolls during the storm. That applies to the express lanes, the turnpike, 408, 417, pretty much any road that has a toll. An important reminder, too, don't drive through flooding. It can take only six inches of water to reach the bottom of most vehicles. Check mynews13.com and the Spectrum News app often to see what the road conditions are like, go to the traffic inbox section if there's a road issue that you want real-time traffic expert Jerry Hume to take action on. He'll be here during our morning news with regular road checks every 10 minutes. November elections are in just five weeks and some new information on how many of you are feeling about one of the races that could drive turnout at the polls. Our exclusive Spectrum News Siena College poll is now out and we're talking abortion and the Supreme Court's Dobbs decision that effectively overturned Roe v. Wade. A majority of Floridians are not happy with that decision. 57% say they oppose it, while 34% say it was the right thing to do. Nearly two thirds of Republicans were on board, but there's huge Democratic opposition. 91% of Democratic voters are against it. The NPA or independent voters weren't thrilled either, opposing it 59 to 30. Another way the data splits down is by gender. Take a look here. Both men and women generally oppose the decision. Women more, 65 to 29. Now, here in Florida, we asked if the recently enacted 15-week abortion ban should be more restrictive, less restrictive, or remain as it is. And there are the numbers for you. Most Republicans say keep it the way it is, but Democrats want it to be less restrictive. The MPA voters here are siding more with the Republicans, saying it should remain as it is. We take a look now at the gender breakdown as well, and you can see both both men and women say it should remain as is, with women tied between that and relaxing the law. The exclusive Spectrum News Siena College poll surveyed 667 likely Florida voters from the 18th through the 25th of September. It has a margin of error of plus or minus 4.5%. We make sure that they're integrated, that they have the resources they need to thrive, not just survive. Florida's population is growing. How and why the Hispanic community is picking Florida to call home. That's next in our special assignment. Here are your winning lottery numbers.
wanted to be a meteorologist to follow in my dad's footsteps. He's not only a meteorologist, but he's also driven me to do a little more. I'd add more to my plate, like baking, because I like the challenge. Here at Spectrum News 13, we're constantly furthering our education. I decided to get my master's in emergency management in order to bring the best forecast to our viewers and prepare them. I'm constantly trying to get better. It's definitely rewarding. I'm meteorologist Mallory Nichols, Spectrum News 13. People choose Spectrum Internet because it's super fast and super reliable. The same reasons when you're out that you should also choose Spectrum Mobile. It's the most reliable service and you get nationwide 5G. Plus, you can manage your internet and mobile on the My Spectrum app so you get all your ducks in a row. That is not a row, Randy. Come on, dude. You're my head duck. Fast, reliable, and simple. Get Spectrum Mobile and Spectrum Internet. Call, click, or visit a Spectrum store today. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Two things you can always count on with hurricane season. Every hurricane is different. Vistron 13 actually able to pick up on those out of rain bands. And the Spectrum News 13 weather experts will always keep you ahead of the storm. We are monitoring two disturbances in the Atlantic. Tracking storms coast to coast with the fastest and most detailed information. Plus the context you need to be prepared. The weather experts only on Spectrum News 13. Keeping you safe this hurricane season on your television and on the go with the Spectrum News app. Welcome back into your weather on the ones on this Monday afternoon. The gorgeous stretch of weather continues for yet another day. Low humidity and temperatures on the comfortable side. Mild out there reaching the low to mid 80s. A beautiful spot to be right along the coast. We'll take you out to the Bogan Muns and Muns weather camera at Shepherd Park, Cocoa Beach, showing those mostly clear skies. A few puffy cumulus clouds bubbling up, but nothing that's bringing us any rain today. We'll watch a weak cool front slide through tomorrow. That could trigger a few isolated showers along the East Coast. Now, if you're a fan of obviously this lower humidity that we've had, it's going to continue and maybe be even reinforced a bit as we head into Tuesday into Wednesday. Notice a huge dip here in the dew point temperatures, measuring the amount of moisture in the air back into the comfortable range. And overall, the humidity is going to stay in check. It is going to climb a little bit by the weekend, but those dew point temperatures staying in the lower 60s is not too bad. Add a little hint that we're heading toward dry season here as we start the new month. So plenty of dry air in place. That's indicated by the reds and oranges on the map. We're seeing the greens. That's that higher humidity or fuel for some showers. But we're really not going to see a lot of showers with the front that sweeps through tomorrow. As we go into the weekend, overall, it's looking pretty nice. Maybe by early next week, we pull in some moisture to trigger us some higher rain chances by Monday of next week. But that's still a week away. So we're looking at clear skies overnight, temperatures down into the low to mid 60s for many spots, 63 in Orlando and Sanford and around Lake Mary, 61 in Leesburg and Claremont. Looking at the mid 60s in Port Orange and Daytona Beach, upper 60s in Titusville and Mims, 68 in Palm Bay and in Mico. As we go into your Tuesday, again, a few showers possible. The better rain chance will be along the East Coast, but notice these temperatures staying in the 70s in Palm Coast, 78 in Daytona Beach, 78 in Titusville, lower 80s in Orlando and Kissimmee. So at the coast tomorrow, we could have a few showers. Surfers will find poor conditions. Wave swells running around three to four feet with a moderate risk of rip currents. Water temperatures hovering in the upper 70s and low 80s. Mariners, small craft advisory because those winds are going to pick up out of the north at 15 to 20 knots. Seas running at four to six feet with a light chop on the intracoastal waterway. The extended forecast showing that slight chance for some showers on Tuesday. Then as we go into Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, beautiful weather. Temperatures staying steady in the low to mid 80s.
Florida currently ranks as the 10th most diverse state in the United States. That's according to U.S. Census Bureau. Over a quarter of the state population identifies themselves as Hispanic or Latino. Dr. Fernando Rivera with the University of Central Florida Puerto Rico Research Hub says Central Florida is a magnet for the Hispanic and Latin community. Spectrum News 13's Asha Wildman takes a look at the growing population here in Central Florida and why members of the community are now calling Central Florida home. Before Oriana Torre moved to Kissimmee two years ago from Venezuela, her and her family were very familiar with the area. Well, we have come here uh, a lot of times, like for vacations, and um, that's one of the reasons we know. Trips to Disney growing up brought smiles to Oriana as a young girl, but now it's learning how to become a journalist while attending Valencia College. When I was in Venezuela, I felt like journalism wasn't uh, a good thing to do there because of the censorship. And here I found a new, you know, hope to do what I want to do. A UN report in 2019 estimated in March of 2019, 94% of Venezuelans lived in poverty. By 2021, that same report says almost 20% of the population or about 5.4 million left their country. Outside of Venezuela, Central Florida's Hispanic and Latino communities are a mix of many different cultures. In Orange County alone, Puerto Ricans make up nearly 15% of the population, while residents who claim Mexican heritage and Cuban heritage each make up around 3% of the county's population. It's one of the reasons many consider Florida a melting pot of Hispanic and Latino culture. Felipe Sousa Lazabale immigrated to Florida from Brazil as a teenager. He is now the executive director of the Hope Community Center in Apopka, serving about 6,500 Hispanic or Latin immigrants a year. We make sure that immigrants are an active part of our community. We make sure that they're integrated, that they have the resources they need to thrive, not just survive. That means Felipe and his team help immigrants with learning how to become a U.S. citizen, as well as offer English classes. For Puerto Ricans living in Central Florida, the island's proximity to Florida and the ongoing economic crisis are just some of the reasons for coming to the Sunshine State. There are opportunities for people to find jobs in different areas, and that's one huge reason why people come. The second is definitely because there is already a big immigrant community here, which makes it easier for immigrants to arrive. The population of people from countries like Colombia, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and the Dominican Republic is also growing. In 2010, Osceola County was about 45.5% Hispanic or Latino. In 2020, data shows that population now leads the county at 54.3%. We love uh, like sun and sunshine, and I think weather, like the language, that's what makes us feel more connected to Florida. Caracas, where I used to live, has an incredible weather, and I miss it so much, but Florida uh, is kind of similar, just a little bit hotter. <laughs> In 2016, the Hispanic Federation published a report on the largest Hispanic populations by state. Florida ranked third behind California and Texas. In Orlando, Asher Wildman for Spectrum News. Currently, Puerto Ricans are the largest Hispanic or Latino community in Central Florida. In Orange County, according to the 2010 census, 26.9% of the county identified as Hispanic or Latino. In 2020, that number went up to 33.1%. The storm has passed, but the cleanup, it is underway. How survivors are trying to salvage what is left of their belongings. Keep it here. Sugar triggers the release of dopamine, the chemical closely linked to pleasure in the brain. So you're saying sugar is a drug? In essence, sugar is just pure calories that does not supply any nutritive value to our body. Colon cancer in patients under the age of 50 is projected to rise over 100 you know, percent within the next decade. I don't think that it's ever too late to create healthy habits. Exploring your health, available on the Spectrum News app. You probably know Spectrum Internet has speeds up to one gig. I do. Well, you work here, but have you heard about Spectrum Advanced Wi-Fi? Once you're connected, you're protected because it comes with state-of-the-art security, like this, but for the Internet. You can let me in now, and it can handle up to 200 devices. 200? Basically, Spectrum built you a better Internet. These guys are very, very good. I mean, it is a team effort. Back to work. Isn't it? 
Spectrum Advanced Wi-Fi. Only available on a better kind of internet. Spectrum Internet. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. My favorite thing about Central Florida is the people, our neighbors, our friends, our coworkers. There's something so special about those early morning hours, and it feels amazing to go out into the community sharing real, authentic stories. When you connect with someone at a personal level, there's a trust. I think it's great to start your day in a way that you feel connected, especially with the morning news. You hear about the weather, the traffic. It's everything you need to get out the door and feel like you're ready to tackle the day. Your morning news on Spectrum News 13. Introducing the new Spectrum News app. Stories that matter to you, now wherever you are. Download the all-new Spectrum News app, your community connection. Glad you're here. I'm Tammy Fields. Here are your top stories in weather in 90 seconds. Record flooding here in Central Florida. This map shows some of the worst hit areas. Many residents have been using small boats to get out of their homes to safety or to wait for water rescues. If your house was damaged by Hurricane Ian, you can now apply for assistance from FEMA. Go to disasterassistance.gov to apply online. You can also apply through the FEMA mobile app or by calling the agencies. Students are getting back to school after the storm. Brevard, Lake, Flagler, Marion, Seminole, and Sumter counties were back in class today. Classes in Orange and Osceola are set to resume tomorrow. Volusia County students go back on Wednesday. Right now, we want to get a check of your forecast from Central Florida's only team of dual certified meteorologists. Good evening, Tammy. It is 631. I'm meteorologist Chris Gilson. Tracking quiet conditions out there. No rain to worry about for those evening plans as we take you into Clyeshawn 13. That little blue line that's racing from Osceola County toward Polk County and Hayden City. That's the East Coast Sea Breeze heading toward Lake Wales. That's about it. It's dropping those temperatures, making it feel pretty nice out there behind that East Coast Sea Breeze. Temperature sliding down into low to mid 60s overnight. As we go into your Tuesday, some added clouds. And we could squeeze out a little bit of light rain, but it's not going to be widespread or heavy rain. Temperatures into the lower 80s. Supplies have been very difficult to find in southwest Florida for many of the people there following Hurricane Ian. Spectrum News 13's Nick Popham reports on a woman that is struggling to find a tarp to cover her roof. It was destroyed from the storm as she continues to try to protect family heirlooms that for her are irreplaceable. A little local. Very few 85 year olds come close to the energy that Donna Stout has day in and day out. I'm a positive person from the get go. She's lived at the Maple Leaf Estates in Port Charlotte for nearly 40 years and just recently spent nearly $40,000 on remodeling her house. Things were good. That is until Hurricane Ian. Everything is wet, you know, because the wind or the rain was just horrendous. That one pillar there went in through the window, and that's my living room there. Thankfully, she evacuated during the storm, but thanks to Ian, the place she's called home for decades now looks like this when she was able to come back home. It uh, was a hell of a lot easier during Charlie when I was 65 than when I'm 85. I had already had my tear breakdown, my meltdown. I think we all do at one time or another. But those breakdowns for her don't last long as she goes back to making sure everything she holds near and dear to her remains intact. And then this is what I'm cleaning up now. This is what, this was the most damaged was this shed. And thanks to Ian, yeah. the shed's roof has been torn up. While that might not seem like a huge deal in the grand scheme of things, it's what's inside that shed that matters the most to her. I brought everything, ever memorabilia, all my grandmother's quilts, uh, you know, my mother's things, and it just tears me apart, you know. All of her memories of her grandma, her mom, her kids, everything she loves is in this shed. And some of them saw damage because of the storm. God bless it. Pictures, you know. 
Some possessions can be replaced, but some can't. She's hoping that she'll soon be able to get a tarp to protect these things, but those have been hard to come by. No matter what happens, though, the positivity of Donna Stout remains as radiant as ever, and no storm can take that from her. But I know life goes on, and everything's going to be okay, and someday we're going to meet them. The old gal stood up here, so everything is good. In Port Charlotte, Nick Popham, Spectrum News. Questions remain around evacuation orders in Lee County, one of the hardest hit places by Hurricane Ian. During a Florida Division of Emergency Management news conference, officials were asked about the response to the storm. Questions rose as to why county officials did not order an evacuation sooner, as forecasts of high storm surge levels were seen as early as three days before landfall. The local emergency management directors make those decisions based on the information that they synthesize at the time and they make the best decisions based on the information they have at the time. I think that's one thing that everybody needs to understand uh, when, when making decisions in a disaster. Emergency management directors do not have a crystal ball. Officials in the briefing also warned people to stay away from disaster areas to let first responders do their jobs. They say those driving through to view the damage risk delaying critical response to those places. Evacuations are still underway in the city of Northport. Emergency management officials have confirmed at least five deaths in that area, though the details on what happened to those people is limited. City officials said there are still many residents in this area without power, and as you can see, there is quite a bit of debris to clean up. Right now, the city does remain under a boil water order, but they have made headway, they say, in their efforts. They have evacuated over 800 people and have cleared all pending emergency calls. Donations of food and water are coming in as well. Next steps is we're trying to get all of our power back on, uh, working with FPL down here. We got about 60 to 65 percent of residents restored to the power, which is good and getting better every day. Northport's emergency manager Michael Ryan said donations are being accepted through United Way. For many here in Central Florida, due to Hurricane Ian, their lives changed overnight. Where floodwaters have receded, some are now facing the damage left behind. Our Nicole Griffin was in East Orange County, where flood victims live. Let me see if I can tug from this side, maybe, and you can pull on that side. Piece by piece, Janet and Stephen Velasquez are busy tearing apart what's left of their family home. There's very little that floodwaters from Hurricane Ian did not damage. Just, it's so surreal. What do you do? What do you tell your kids? You know. Outside on the driveway, years of memories laid out to dry. There are no words to say thank you. Uh, I can't re make out the rip. Oh no, I'm not even going to try to rip. Having been a teen mom and the first person from her family to graduate college, these notes and mementos from her children have always been a source of strength for Velasquez, reminding her what she worked so hard for. Having weathered many storms in this home, she didn't think they were at risk. I never imagined flood. Despite not being in a flood zone here, as the storm hit East Orange County, water rushed into their home. The house had water level was about here. It's a new reality that's hard to swallow as she walks through the now empty rooms where she raised her family. The insurance said that they don't have flood coverage on my policy and so none of this is covered, that this is all of our responsibility to replace. In the backyard, it's still hard to believe that this now calm river rose up and caused this much destruction. The water got up to this high. While they can no longer live in their home and are unsure of what the future holds, Velasco is confident they'll get through it one day at a time. What do you do? But just try to slowly pick up the pieces of, of life and rebuild. In Orange County, Nicole Griffin, Spectrum News. Health hazards and sewage spills are causing headaches for some Central Florida residents following the hurricane. How lakes and rivers and surrounding areas are also being impacted. Keep it here.
Trust isn't a given. It has to be earned. It has to be kept. It's a trek we make in the stories we tell and the balance we strike, the communities we connect, voices we share. We've been on this journey for a long time. Hello, I'm Annika Pergament. You're watching Spectrum News. We're here to illuminate how the national stories impact your local community. So this one size fits all network upgrade is the best you guys can do? Better than that. It's the only thing we do. That's how we know it's right for you. You're just gonna have to accept it. Yeah, accept it. No, you don't. At Spectrum Enterprise, we design solutions around your needs for success on your terms. Because we believe technology only works if it works for you. So go ahead, be unreasonable. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 We are connected, engaged, from the moment we rise, we move, we adjust, we learn, explore, relax, and grow together so we're ready to build a better tomorrow. Stay informed throughout your day with the Spectrum News app, exclusively for Spectrum customers. Attractions Insider, a weekly Spectrum News podcast with the inside scoop on your favorite Florida attractions. Available now on the Spectrum News app. Six forty-one on this beautiful first Monday of October. I'm meteorologist Chris Gilson. We're looking at rain-free conditions out there this evening in a beautiful sky along the coast. Take a look at this shot there from the Bogan Muns and Muns weather camera at Shepherd Park, Cocoa Beach. Off in the distance, the Cocoa Beach Pier looking pretty nice there. And we're looking at temperatures there along the coast in the 70s. Maybe needing a sweatshirt out there. Live look at Clash on 13 radar showing those quiet skies from the east coast to the west coast. A few showers well off our east coast out into the Atlantic waters, but we could squeeze out some rain tomorrow. It's not going to be significant rain, so good news for the cleanup efforts tomorrow. We're not looking at any significant rain, uh, just some spotty light showers. Notice 6, 7 o'clock, we're basically done with the rain. We'll have some clouds overhead as we head into daybreak on Wednesday. Plenty of sunshine and our winds coming out of the north and that northerly wind component is going to usher in another reinforcing shot of dry air. So that humidity is not going to creep up anytime soon. As we've been mentioning and still ongoing is flooding, unfortunately, across the region. However, there's a little bit of hope here in the forecast, especially for the Little Wakiva River near Altamont Springs. Notice this is where we were at the end of last week into the weekend. We we're well above major flood stage, record flood stage. And now as we go into the next couple of days, Tuesday and Wednesday here, and notice how that floods those flood waters start to recede as we go toward the middle and latter portion of the week. So we're still at moderate flood stage right now, but it is going to continue to go down as we go into Tuesday into Wednesday. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Overnight, temperatures down into lower 60s, and then tomorrow, some added clouds overhead with a few showers possible, mainly to the east of I-4. We'll take a look at that weekend forecast going to the tropics coming up in less than 10 minutes. Right now, it's another check on Clystron 13 radar. Hurricane Ian brought more than just stormwater flooding to a number of residents around Central Florida. Many people are also suffering the impacts of sewage spills or impacting their homes and yards. Spectrum News 13's Will Robinson Smith visited one of those spots in Titusville and reports this is not only a problem now, but will likely cause a good deal of harm to the Indian River Lagoon as well. 
The storm is long past in Titusville. Love to get some of this debris picked up, but. But for Michael Maine and his neighbors in this historic part of Titusville. This is all coming from the pump house. Raw sewage is still coating much of his backyard. We'll call it sludge. Maine and his family have owned this slice of paradise since the 1980s. But ongoing flow from the pump station next door spoils the view and your nostrils. And this failure is not a new issue. Light rainstorms, no. Big storms, yes. Lots of rain, pumps fail, electricity goes out. Here we are. And as bad as this seems, Things are exponentially worse next door at Scott Reedy's home, where the sewage water is ankle deep and higher. Shocking to a homeowner who's been living in this historic home for more than 40 years. Um, I've never seen it like this. And um, I've heard them say, oh, it was overload from the storm and all this kind of stuff, but it's infrastructure, you know. While we were on property on Monday, crews from the city of Titusville were out replacing one of the pumps that had issues following Hurricane Ian. Sean Stoffer, the water resources director for the city, said power issues contributed to the pumps failing. The city is in the pre-design phase of a new project that will reroute about a million gallons of sewage waste out west instead of sending it north, but that solution is still a few years away. Dr. Lisa Sudo with the Marine Resources Council says at least 14 discharges from Titusville and elsewhere in the county will fuel algae blooms and fish kills in the future. She says this is a failure of infrastructure. Right now we're about 30 years behind the eight ball on our stormwater management techniques and you've heard me talk about low impact development and you know treating stormwater in a different way uh, and our wastewater infrastructure techniques. But until those improvements are made, that'll just mean more headache and health hazards for residents like Reedy and Maine. Reporting in Titusville, Will Robinson Smith, Spectrum News. The Marine Resource Council has documented 14 cases of sewage spills across Bavard County since Thursday. It's not clear at this point how much has spilled into the Indian River Lagoon so far. An early estimate from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection is that 50,000 gallons spilled between Thursday and Saturday at the Titusville site. I'm Danielle Stein, and this is your Sports Minute. The NFL has been under a microscope the past couple of weeks, looking at the Dolphins specifically after Tua Tagovailoa suffered a head injury in back-to-back -back weeks. Now, Mike McDaniel said that the scans came back clean, but that he will not play in this upcoming game against the Jets. Now, the NFLPA is investigating the situation, and the league is working on changing certain concussion protocols. All right, you're going to have enough time for Black Friday shopping this year because the Battle of I-4 has been moved. UCF confirming its annual rivalry game against USF. Will we play it on the Saturday after Thanksgiving? Now, looking at history, when the game is held on Black Friday, UCF is 7-0. On the flip side, USF 6-0 on non-Black Friday meetings. And the Bucks back to square one at two and two on the season. Rick Stroud's going to join us for the Bucks beat tonight on Spectrum Sports 360. We'll see you tonight at 10:30. Time now for our market wrap up. U.S. stocks had their best day since late July. That's because falling bond yields eased some of the pressure that has battered markets. Taking a look at the numbers on the board, the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P 500 ended with big gains by the closing of the bell. Here in our area, if you're in search for a new job, Universal is hiring for more than 2,500 positions across its resort. Openings include attractions, call center, custodial entrance, operations, merchandise, food, Food and beverage and parking. Universal says it's starting base pay for hourly workers is $15, but could be higher based on the position. Interested candidates should apply online at universalorlandojobs.com. Universal says eligible candidates will be contacted for an interview. Here's a look now at how some businesses with Central Florida ties performed. L3 Harris and Lockheed Martin had gains leading into a busy space week. Disney also ended in the green. Extremely important to diagnose them in a timely fashion. A respiratory illness that can paralyze the age group at risk and doctors' recommendations on how to protect them. Keep it here.
This hurricane season, stay informed and prepared with the Spectrum News app. Get up to the minute information from your weather experts live, Clystron 13 radar, and set up essential alerts when you need them most. Spectrum News, your community connection, available on the App Store and Google Play. And the Spectrum News 13 weather experts will always keep you ahead of the storm with the fastest and most detailed information plus the context you need to be prepared. Keeping you safe this hurricane season on your television and on the go with the Spectrum News app. It's easy to spot nonsense in your business internet and phone bill. The Spectrum business bill is straightforward with an all-in price. These other internet bills have surprise fees, added phone taxes. There's even a road work recovery surcharge. I call those nonsense fees. Write that down. Who thinks that Spectrum Business is the better choice. <laughs> nice work. Air high fives for everyone. Yeah, nice work. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Sundays, take an in-depth look at your community. In Focus with Allison Walker, where decision makers come together and examine issues that impact Floridians. The travel and tourism industry is so very important to the state of Florida. It's a solutions-based conversation. I think we're making progress in the right direction. Your community, your state, your show. In Focus with Allison Walker, Sundays at 1130 on Spectrum News 13, exclusively on Spectrum. Nice, quiet stretch of weather underway here in Central Florida for those cleaning up after the activity that we had last week. The good news is that we're not anticipating any widespread heavy downpours by any means for the upcoming week. Just a few showers possible tomorrow. Before we get into that, let's take a look at the tropics. I wish I could say hurricane season is over after what we went through last week, but it's not. It's not over until the end of November and even outside of the months of climatological hurricane season, which is June 1st through November 30th. We we can have development. We are watching two areas, but no major concerns for us here in central Florida. One's going to stay way out there in the eastern Atlantic as it moves into the open waters to the west and northwest later on this week. It could further organize into a tropical system, but that's not a concern for us. We were watching this tropical wave to the east of the Lesser Antilles and still are. However, last night and early this morning, it was up to a moderate chance for development. The chance for development has come down a bit this afternoon and down to a lower chance, but still watching it as it moves toward the Caribbean. It looks like it would stay pretty far to the south. It's still early on, but this is not a concern for us here in central Florida. We're just enjoying the sunshine, a break from all the active weather last week. We will see another nudge of dry air work in as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday. So we're going to lower the humidity and keep the mostly dry conditions in place. A few spotty showers, as I mentioned earlier, will be possible for tomorrow, uh, but it's not going to be widespread. Just a little bit of light rain, mainly along the coast or just offshore. So east of I-4, we'll see a better rain chance. Places like Daytona Beach down toward Melbourne in Miko could squeeze out a little bit of shower activity along the I-95 corridor. If you're in places like Ocala over into Leesburg, Claremont, Wildwood and the villages, you're going to stay rain free. As we go into Wednesday, plenty of sunshine overhead. That continues to be the case as we go into Thursday with temperatures into the low to mid 80s. Pollen forecast brought to you by Van Dingen Law. It's moderate to high with the drier conditions through Thursday. Ragweed and grass are the primary allergens. So as we go into Tuesday, we are looking at temperatures back into the 70s and low 80s with a few showers, mainly along the coast, then plenty of sunshine Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and into the weekend, still looking mostly dry.
your health. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, reports that respiratory illnesses are on the rise among youth here in the United States. The agency is now warning doctors and parents to be on the lookout for a rare paralyzing condition. It's called acute flaccid myelitis, or AFM. Doctors say parents should look out for drooping eyes, numbness and tingling of arms and legs, and loss of muscle tone. Doctors believe weakening of the muscles make it harder for a child suffering from AFM to actually breathe. The CDC is urging healthcare providers to test for AFM. Doctors are sending a strong message to you. Get your flu shot. They say the flu may be making a strong comeback following historic mended for people above the age of six months old. Seniors, one of the high risk groups for the flu, can get a revved up flu shot for better protection if they so choose. Doctors recommend you have your flu shot by Halloween. If you have well water, you'll want to make sure that it's safe to drink after Hurricane Ian. If your well was affected by flooding, there may be sickening organisms in it, making it unsafe to drink. Here are some things from the state health department that you can do. Bring the water to a rolling boil for at least one minute. Disinfect tap water by adding eight drops of unscented bleach per gallon. You can also use bottled water, which the health department says is good, especially when mixing baby formula. Keep water in clean containers they say we have ways to test your well and are seen on 13 section of our website just go to mynews13.com an update for cruisers there will be no more proof of vaccination or negative covid 19 tests required for norwegian cruise line the company just made that announcement saying it will be removing all testing masking and vaccination requirements when passengers and crew are off the ship you must follow requirements of the port cities that you're docking in which vary by country the company worked with the cdc they say to develop dozens of safety measures during its shutdown all in an effort to get cruise lines back up and running. Cleanup crews and rescue and recovery. How Floridians are helping one another after Hurricane Ian. We'll explain. You're watching Spectrum News 13. Keep it here. Now let's take a look at what's happening in our community. Brought to you by the expert injury attorneys at Todd Minor Law.